To me, the hardest part of successful technology development is choosing what it is you're going to work on. We spent a lot of time in the emergency department uh, observing problems, interviewing practitioners, and, uh, and there's a whole lot of problems to observe. So it wasn't that difficult for us to come up with 200 problems uh, to, ad to address, potentially. Uh, so we're in the process of whittling those down to five problems, uh, five of which that need to be technologically feasible, there needs to be high demand for a solution, and of course it needs to be something that we're interested in developing a solution for. Uh, right now we're thinking about working on bone marrow biopsies and just trying to change that procedure some way, somehow. Right now about 700,000 bone marrow biopsies are done in the U.S and about 58% of them aren't done accurately because the sample is you know, inadequate. And so it's a very painful procedure too. So we want to come up with a, with a technology that will better serve the population, make it faster, easier, and pain-free. So this is basically our cell of interest. It's a progenitor cell, and uh, it's the precursor to all blood cells. And uh, with this cell, you can, uh, if you give this into a bone without devoid of any bone marrow, it can repopulate the bone marrow and restore uh, hematogenesis. In the next year, uh, we hope to narrow down on that one perfect problem that we want to solve, and then we want to make a prototype, and we want to make a business plan, and we're going to pitch it to real venture capitalists. And we're really excited to do this, and we, we hope we're successful. Um, so the first thing that happens, you walk in the door at the emergency department, and you go to the registration desk. Uh, you tell them your name and a chief complaint. And um, so what we want to do is add a little extra onto here and, and basically have the registration guy uh, say, Hey, would you like to participate in our new program? Uh, we're going to send you texts about your hospital stay. It uh, is awesome. And then the patient says yes, and they give us the phone number, uh, which is a, a pure cartoon. How will you sell your product to potential investors? Um, you know, what, what need is it addressing? What's the size of that market out there? How do you raise the money? How do you talk about the financial risks and the legal risks uh, of these? How do you create companies that do this? What are the various ways in which you can take a technology and get it out to people? Because the best idea in the world means nothing if it sits in your closet for the rest of your life. So you have to find ways of get these things out. One of the things that as a program we're doing is blurring the boundary between the school and the real world. Their problems that they're picking are real world problems. The people that they're going to have to sell their solutions to are real world people. You constructed your argument very well in the course of this presentation, right? Because you do identify the pay points, and so any opportunities typically for cost saving, for time savings, and convenience savings are really good opportunities for uh, device invention and insertion. Because my measure of success from the point of view of education is is how open are they in their thinking to criticizing their own work, to throwing out their own work, to starting again, and to seeing that there's always more than one way to do things and there's always more than one project you can work on. 